Hey, Harry. You excited for the show today? Am I excited for the show today? You know, today? we got Greg Maddox on today. Greatest of all time. My yeah. personal favorite athlete. Yeah. And it'll be great to have another pitcher on the show. You know, one pitcher to another. Oh, why? You used to throw a little ball? Did I throw a little ball? I was like third division all region come in high on, school. Come on. Yeah, I had a knuckle slurve that used to get all the guys out. Where's the knuckle? Oh, it's right there. Here, let me show Let's you. Let's see it. I'll show you. Ah! Oh! Ooh, there was some movement on that ball. Is he going to hey, be okay? Don't you have a show to do? No. Live show? No script? What could possibly go wrong? And you know, this is the most anticipated show of all time, <laughs> according to me. <laughs> tonight, why are you laughing, Amanda? Tonight on the show, you know, this is a very special Callaway Live. Tonight on the show, we get to have my all-time favorite athlete is right here on the show. And as you guys know, this show only exists to satisfy my crazy fantasies. <laughs> you're all a part of that. Congratulations. Amanda, you're part of that. Greatest, greatest, uh, greatest. It gets weird so fast <laughs> with you. <laughs> yes. Thanks for being here, Amanda, and being a part of, of my fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded weird. Um, Greg Maddox is in my fantasies, not you. That's even weirder. <laughs> Greatest pitcher of all time. And a lot of people around the office were like, I can't believe you have this like Greg Maddox obsession. I'm like, it's not an obsession. I just admire him. I grew up in Atlanta, massive Braves fan, watched him in really the heart of his career. I love the way that he conducted business and we're gonna have him on the show. So. I just feel like it, it actually is an obsession. I'm gonna object to that statement. It's not an obsession. No, it is it's not. It's not like, what about what you did with your dog, Doug? What? What's the what? Well, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> you had a little. I don't see what the. I don't uh, see what the problem is with that. You shaved 31 in him. You don't think that's a bit obsessive? Pure coincidence to remind me to give him 31 pats or something like that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, what about your car? What about my car, man? Uh, so, I mean, again, I could see how you would you would take that out of context, but uh, yeah. So, so I'm a fan. Big so deal. So, what do those K's mean then, if it's not? Those are all of the times that I called and left drunk messages on Greg's voicemail. <laughs> right, not obsessive at all. Not weird. You, you know where I think that you, there's no way you could argue with me? Yeah. Is your kids. What? Grega and Gregia? Maduxia? What's so yeah. weird about that? Maduxia? No, no, no coincidence? I think, I just feel like that's a coincidence that you're bringing out of context here. Okay, well then, I, this, this one I feel like you can't fight with. What about your house, the thing that you live in? Do you know how hard it was to find a, a street called Maddox Street and then buy the, 30, the address 31? But no obsession, totally healthy. Absolutely not, and I'm gonna prove it to you when Greg comes out here, there will be absolutely no weirdness from me when he comes out. Weird thing, he actually just ran out the back door. They're oh, calling stay, me right here. So we better get to it then. Greg, stay back there. Amanda, stay right there, and we'll be right back with Greg Maddox. <laughs> I'm Matt Hainline, and here's a 30 seconds to better with Odyssey Golf. Speed is crucial when it comes to putting. Four speed leads to three putts. It leads to missing putts when you hit it on the right line. So here's a great drill for you. Set up a club about a foot behind the hole and hit putts, and your goal is to get the ball to the hole but not hit the club. Anytime you can get the ball dying around the hole, you got a chance to make it go in. Do that tip, and that'll help your putting. However, 355 wins. He's a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame. He 18 gold gloves, mm -hmm. 17 straight years of winning 15 games or more in the Major League Baseball. And most
most importantly, World Series winner in 1995 for the Atlanta Braves. Please welcome to Callaway Live, Greg Maddox. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're going to have to do most of the talking because I'm just going to sit here and stare at you for the next 15 minutes. If that's he already cool gave me that look. He's very freaked out right now. I know. <laughs> my, my wife is too. She's in the audience. And when she found out you were on the show, she's like, are you going to be able to handle this? And I said, yeah. absolutely. So here you are. And you know what I was realizing? It's been eight years since you last played in Major League Baseball. If you were a golfer, you'd still be playing. Well, yeah. <laughs> does it seem that, that long has gone by yeah, since your last? Yeah, time flies. It really does. Uh, retirement's great. Whoever says they don't like retirement, they're not doing it right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's been uh, uh, it's been great. I've, I've uh, actually stayed in the game a little bit. I've uh, part-timed helped out the coaches a little bit with uh, the Cubs, Rangers, and Dodgers now, and uh, uh, still get my baseball fixed. But I love being retired. And how much golf are you playing these days? A lot. Yeah. I really do. I play a lot. I think I just looked back there and I think I played over 100 rounds already. This already year. this so, year? Yeah. So You're yeah. on your way to 130. That's slightly yeah. less than hashtag Chad plays with us, Amanda. It is. I know. You're correct. Which is great. So when did this golf obsession hit you? Because from my perspective, you know, your your life began when you joined the Atlanta Braves. So um, <laughs> was, it, did it, was there before you signed with the Braves a big, big, big golf culture with the Braves? Absolutely. You know, I played a little bit with my dad and brother, uh, but I when I went to Atlanta, it was kind of mandatory that you play golf. I mean, that was like uh, uh, one of the first things they had to check you out. Hey, do you golf? Because, you know, Smoltzy, Glav, uh, Bobby Cox, John Sherholtz, everybody, the whole organization played. Trainers played. So uh, uh, you had to pass the golf test first before you were really accepted, you know, in, in that clubhouse. And it was pretty unique, I think, that it was such a big part because I know a lot of other clubs don't really like people playing golf during the season. Yeah, that's true. You know, especially the hitters, they think it'll mess up their swing. So uh, you liked it then. You're probably sending I, all the hitters I, golf clubs. I, I, yeah, <laughs> get them a tee time wherever they can get one. But yeah, we played. I mean, it's it's kind of what we did on the road. You know, you're on the road half the year, and uh, there is a lot of downtime. And you know, a lot better to be on a golf course than you know, out in the city late at night getting in trouble. <laughs> so you packed your clubs on all the road trips, take them right there with you? Absolutely. And all the position players were like, you guys playing golf. Yeah, well, they snuck out with us every now and then, <laughs> too, but we had, to, we had to keep it quiet when they when they snuck out. And did you guys, the three of you, you and, and Maddox and, and Smoltz, obviously, three Hall of Famers, um, you guys were sort of formed kind of a nucleus of that golf group every yeah, week, didn't you? absolutely. You know, Smoltzy was coordinator. Smoltzy set it all up, had the tee times, the rental cars, uh, you know, a member if we had to play with a member, and uh, he had everything coordinated, and, you know, whoever was pitching that night missed out, and, you know, the other guys went. <laughs> Yeah. There was there any place that they went on a day that you pitched where you're like, you guys, you could have, you couldn't have waited a yeah. day or two. They got me once. We had a uh, off day in San Francisco, and they went to uh, Pebble and Cyprus and uh, played down there. And yeah, it hurts hanging out. Yeah. That one kind of hurt hanging out in the hotel room all day doing nothing. Would you guys talk about pitching when you're on the golf course at all? Uh, occasionally, occasionally, but usually we talked about golf when we were in the dugout. You know, it was kind of the other way around. So. Uh, but we would, we would, uh, you know, we would go over situations and hitters and, you know, yeah. sh share our complaints with one another. <laughs> and, but yeah, we had a good time. Or do you play golf the same way you pitch? You were obviously one of the most precise um, pitchers with the best command probably yeah. in a generation. Do you play golf that way? Well, no, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not really sure where it's going half the time. But uh, yeah, you know, when you pitch, you're aiming for this corner or that corner or up here or down here. And in golf, you're kind of just aiming that way. You know what I mean? Airborne and forward. Yeah. Get it in the air that way. And if you find it, it's a good shot. When did you learn as a pitcher to really what you just described is hitting like very precise locations um, to a batter during the game? Well, I think you started learning it right when you come up. It's, as soon as you get to the big leagues, you know, I think uh, the, the video is available and, and, you know, the scouting reports are more detailed. But, uh, you know, there's always a certain 
I believe you can throw a strike any time, any count to any hitter. You just have to figure out which one to throw. So I think that's kind of where that started is, uh, uh, you know, the goal was to throw a strike every time. And if they happen to hit it, it stayed in front of the outfield. You know, that was fine. So uh, uh, that's when you started looking, you know, up, down, hard, soft, in, out, and just kind of went off that. I always felt like your, the magic that you brought to the table was even before they talked about sabermetrics and really slicing and dicing the game statistically. I always felt like you had an intuition for exactly how to get through a lineup with not just the fastest way possible, but with the fewest amount of pitches also. Well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, luckily, I didn't throw a say as hard as Smoltzy, so uh, I didn't get many foul balls. You know, when guys when guys swung at, swung off me, they usually put it in play. So. Uh, uh, you had to rely on keeping it in front of the outfield. You know, I think uh, uh, we can watch any game tonight, and whatever pitcher keeps the ball in front of the outfield the best is going to win. You know, no matter you know what, what ballpark they're playing the game in. I, I told you this before we went on. I think from a 10-year period, from like '93 to to 2003, I think I watched every single one of your starts, which was great because every one of his starts was like two hours and ten minutes. <laughs> so now you know games are going three and a half, four hours. You had some games. I think I remember one game, 74 pitch complete game. Um, yeah, that was a fluke. But yeah, <laughs> pitch in the contact barely wor yeah. barely worked up a sweat. Did it ever bother you when you were a player how? People used to talk about you being the professor and how precise, et cetera. Yeah, it's kind of corny, yeah. you know. I mean, <laughs> you're out there, you're out there throwing just as hard as everybody else, you know. And but uh, I took it as a compliment, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, it was nice. Yeah. Do you still think about the game at all? Like any any games in particular in your career that pop up when you're mm. having a glass of something late at night? Uh, you know what? Not really. You know, not really. Occasionally, uh, uh, you might see highlights of a game, and, and you know, you kind of enjoy watching that. But, uh, you know, now I'm more of a coach than a player, so uh, I think about, I try to use my experiences to help the players out now. And uh, I guess I look at it that way. I'll, I'll, I'll reflect back that way before I say something to, uh, to one of the players. Now, as you're a coach, you're coaching your son at UNLV this year. Mm -hmm. Or do they look at you as, as Hall of Famer, or are you like, oh, your son's old dude that's walking around in the dugout? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, <laughs> we start next week, so yeah. I, I still need to meet those players. But, uh, uh, you know, like this year, like uh, doing a little stuff with the Dodgers, you know, and, and spending time in their farm system a little bit, you, you, you really have to be careful what you say. And, and, and you know, I just try to be honest and not lie to anybody and just, just, just tell the truth. I heard an interview with Smoltz on Dan Patrick's show not that long ago, um, and he was saying, yeah, Greg, when it, Greg would try to help me, he would say stuff that I didn't even know what he was talking about. So <laughs> do you find that to be the case when you're, you know, would you pitch at such a high level trying to teach someone how to do something? You know what? Uh, at times, yes, but it, it's always nice when you hear two or three years down the road, they go, that's what you were talking about, you know, and I think that, for me, that's, that's just as rewarding as getting a win, you know, 10 years ago. Does that happen in golf where you get a lesson and you don't even really, it doesn't click? Well, till... Yeah, I'm still <laughs> waiting for my lessons to click in on that one. But uh, yeah, golf's so much harder than baseball. I mean, you know, baseball, you stand up there and you throw it as hard as you can, and every pitch is a sprint. And, you know, golf, you know, you got to slow it down and have soft hands. You got to think a little bit more. Uh, there's a lot more time between shots for stuff to creep in there that shouldn't be in there. And, uh, but yeah, but I love it. It's a great game. Is it harder to get out of your head in golf than it was in baseball? Like a bad shot from going yeah. shot to shot? Yeah, because golf's fun. You know, baseball, that, that's, that's, that's how I made my livelihood. So, but uh, yeah, golf, it's pretty easy to snap one OB and just throw down another one and go on. Well, a couple things we do here, everybody knows this. Number one, we feel we make the best golf equipment in the United States. I'll hold for applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. And when people say, are you guys in the golf equipment business? We're like, we are, but we're also in the dream granting business. And so today, Amanda, we knew coming in, we're like, well, what can we do for Greg? Clearly, we can help him a little bit with his golf game. But is there anything else that maybe we could do for Greg yeah. while he's here? I, I don't know.
know if really this is a dream that Greg ever knew he had, <laughs> but maybe you, you realize this is something you needed because going up against maybe the worst lineup we could ever put you up against. You've had such a successful career, but we decide you've never faced people like you faced today. Check it out. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Harry Arnett Field on the campus of Callaway Park. This is Tim Brando with some history in the making today. Hall of Fame pitcher Greg Maddox trying to accomplish something he never could in his many years in Major League Baseball, a no-hitter. He struck him out. And another strikeout for Maddox. The pitch. Swung out and missed strike three. The crowd is on their feet in Carlsbad here at Callaway Park. Strike three call. Two and two the count. He rocks and fires. He struck her out. Changing speeds and that cut fastball has just been outstanding today at Callaway Park. Just one out left. Here's the pitch. He got him. And a no-no. A no-hitter for Greg Maddox. Incredible. we could provide that for you and for a guy that uh, is pretty analytical not overly emotional do you think maybe you have a couple tips for our guys because I think we were a little overly emotional yeah a little, with that. A little up tight oh, there tone oh, it down a little yeah, bit, they're right? fired up <laughs> <laughs> you like Stop. seeing batters dig in and super aggressive don't you yeah, I like seeing a miss yeah that, <laughs> that, that, that pitch to contacts overrated when they swing and miss that's really good what was the one thing if you could pass it on to young players today, pitchers, that you would try to have them accept that maybe they don't necessarily think is true? Well, that's a tough one because it really depends on the player. But I think really, like, especially with the guys in the minor leagues, is, is try to get the most out of your ability. You know, there's a, uh, there's a very small window that you're going to have to play this game. And, and uh you know, you're going to have about a, a four or five year period where you're going to have to make enough money to live the rest of your life on. So it's 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 important that any time you step on that baseball field that that you make an honest effort to get better. I mean, that's a very poignant moment or point to make to guys on how do you transition from being just a you know high school or college player to being a professional. Well, it's, a, it's a big leap, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, the whole thing is, uh, uh, again, if, if, if you make an honest effort to get better, then chances are good things are going to happen for you. Is that translating to your golf game? Nope. <laughs> 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 no. My, yeah, my, I have fun, though. I, I enjoy playing golf, and uh, uh, I hit you know, a couple shots every day that, that make it worth getting out of bed for. Does it satisfy the competitive juices at all? From uh, I mean, is that was that a big transition from retirement to not having that thing that really mm, played into your... No, I was ready. You, are, you, know, you know how you always want to play one or two more years? I did that like three times. <laughs> so uh, uh, I was definitely ready to, to shut it down when, when, when the time came. And uh, I look back and, and very fortunate to have the career I had and and uh, uh, all the friendships along the way. I mean, you know, still to be able to like, you know, talk to Smoltz here, Glav on the phone right now is pretty cool. Yeah, do you talk to those guys a lot? Occasionally, yeah. Yeah, yeah Glav's got something going on right now where he's got a charity thing and, you know, Smoltz, he's uh, uh, always looking, you know, for a tea time somewhere. You know, he bounces around the country now. and but it's really good to hear from those guys. Are there any of the statistics that you look at from your career that make you say, I, that, that's pretty incredible that I was able to do that? Yeah, easily the World Series ring. You know, I think, uh, uh, you know, there might be a little criticism, hey, you only want one, but you know what, I got one. And uh, <laughs> it's pretty special. I'm a Braves fan, so I wish you hadn't have brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was interesting because um, I'm, this is aside, maybe I'm projecting my own. That team, that 95 team, when I look at the long history of the franchise, that really wasn't the best team on paper that ended up winning it. No, it wasn't. We had plenty of, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, I mean, you get in the postseason, you've got 
four, eight teams now that, that are actually really good. And yeah, it's, it's no different than a, a golf event. Anybody can win it. You know, there's 30 guys that are going to be good enough to win this week on tour. And, and you know, when, when the playoffs start next month in baseball, uh, you know, the Cubs got the best record in the world right now, but any one of those eight teams can catch fire for a month and, and, and win it. Well, I have, I'll leave you with this. This is my favorite Greg Maddox story. He doesn't even know that this that I have this story. But and what are you laughing at? This I, is not going to be weird. You can't freak him out it's anymore. Not be that we are. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be weird. But in in '97, my brother and I went to the Astrodome. It was the most amazing thing I ever saw you do. And we went to the Astrodome back when they had baseball in there, and they had just put in this new left field scoreboard that was meant to make the Astrodome look like you should play baseball in the Astrodome, which you really shouldn't, but they did. And they had a manual scoreboard. It was uh, opening day, and the guy, you were probably 80 feet from the scoreboard, and this guy who's working the manual scoreboard would open up one of the portals with the numbers, and it was sort of like whack-a-mole. You would throw the ball in, and then he would duck, and it would go in there, and then he'd show up again, two levels down, open it up, and you would throw. Do you remember that? You don't, do you? Well, yeah, we th yeah. Well, we do stuff guys all the time. <laughs> yeah. So my brother and I were watching that, thinking that that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and it got harder and harder and harder. He kept throwing a little harder, a little harder, a little harder. He didn't really throw a little harder, a little harder. Yeah. But uh, but we really appreciate you being here, Greg. Well, we know you're you. busy. You know you got to hit the coaching trail and a lot of obligations. But we're so honored to have you here. And thanks again for yeah. for showing up. Thank you. It was Thank awesome. you, Greg Maddox, everybody. Herb Edwards on the show next week on Cowboy Live. Thanks everybody for being here. We'll see you again.